In the previous quest, we tried to realign our reduction system in the hopes of making it quieter. Unfortunately, it didn't change much. We want to thank everyone for the suggestions in the comment section. We did consider a belt and pulley type solution, but at the end we will probably stay with the chain and simply build a soundproofing box. Although the rainy season wasn't there yet, we knew it would be soon approaching, so next up on the to-do list was getting rid of the last few leaks. One of them was a pipe inside the boat that the spinnaker sheet used to run through. We've already removed the pipe on the port side before. Now it was time to remove the starboard one and patch up the holes it left behind. Once the pipe was removed, the surface needed a bit of evening out. Using the multi-tool, Bartek cut off the remaining pieces of fiberglass that held the pipe in place. Then, after the last piece was removed, the holes needed some prep work. In our usual while we're at it fashion, we decided to redo a couple of old hardware holes that we missed in the first pass more than a year before. So they were redrilled.
małe łatki. After all the miscellaneous holes, dents and little cracks we could find were prepped, it was time to seal them, hopefully once and for all. We used a mix of epoxy thickened with colloidal silica and some shortly cut fiberglass. Where the pipe exited in the cockpit, we decided to only fill them. We will add fiberglass layers on top later, as we still have to reinforce the whole area. There used to be some hatches, which are now gone and were only replaced with some plywood. A warstewki będziemy robić potem osobno czy od razu? Co rozumiesz już z warstewki? A w sensie fiberglasio na... Czy nie robimy fiberglasio? Widziałaś ile ja w tą dziurę wypchnąłem? Mhm. Nie wiem do końca... Przypuszczam, że jakbyśmy może to robili albo kiedyś tam w którymś okay. z tych momentów to wtedy to przykryjemy. Mm -hmm. But for now it's fine. So we just focused on the leak prevention portion. We were mixing small batches, so we wouldn't have to worry about the epoxy kicking in too fast. Although that was an unnecessary panic, because with the new epoxy with tropical hardener our friend helped us get, Fiberglassing life became way more chill. Less ratio of squa. Nie? Niesamowite ilości można wcisnąć do takiej małej dziurki, wiesz? Ważka. The entry holes additionally got a layer of fiberglass and peel ply on top, and there was nothing left to do but wait for everything to kick in. I started on another project, but it got paused in favor of an afternoon walk around the island.
zobaczyłaś. No sygnał. Ciekawe, skąd przypłynął. Muszę mówić, że pranie chcesz robić. Może. We finished the walkabout with a nice swim and headed back to the boat. Next morning, after the epoxy had sufficient time to cure, we took off the bottom tape to see if the holes filled nicely all the way down. After analyzing all of them, we came to the conclusion that they were decent enough and proceeded to a celebratory coconut water, followed by admiring the local sailing Cayucos. Though it was only the end of April, we already started getting some heavy rains. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And one of those pointed to us that our leak finding job is not done yet. Besides the obviously leaking stanchion, we found another suspect piece of hardware to rebad. One of the many reasons we love Oish so much is that everything is so easily accessible. There is no headliner or much in terms of cabinetry to hide stuff and inevitably make our life miserable. Everything is right there and visible. We got rid of the remnants of some kind of polyurethane schmoo and replaced it with our go-to solution these days, butyl tape. Będą ogólnie bliżej środka. A nie na odwrót? Nie. Widzisz, jak jest wygięte, nie? Do środka było wygięte. Ech. To mogę je przełożyć. And again, to balance out work and play, we decided to move places. As it was an almost dead calm day and we were moving less than 3 miles, we thought we will do some range testing. 
Normally, we barely use our electric motor, so we thought it would be a good opportunity to run it for a bit longer than just duration of dropping or picking up the anchor. Even as the wind picked up a tiny bit, the motor performed flawlessly, and soon we arrived at Isla Flores. Quick look at our OISH terminal showed that by noon we already recharged what we used in terms of electricity. Each day I like our electric motor more and more. We picked up some fruits and veggies from a local panga and decided to go fishing. Just as we were heading back and our camera battery was dying, Bartek caught a fish. I missed.
perfect end to an already beautiful day. Oh,